come back and follow. Uh, Andy, Reverend Maxwell, the other ministers that are here, elected officials, congratulations, Shelly. Um, I did it for 21 years, uh, so I don't know if I should have sympathy or congratulations, but I'll give you congratulations. Gary, Tiffany, all of those. Will, it's good to see you again. All of those that have chosen at one point in time to, to step up and, and ask the citizens for your vote. It's, uh, it's a very humbling experience, and it comes with a tremendous responsibility. Part of that responsibility is to try in some small way to carry out the dream that Martin Luther King laid out in that Washington Mall so many years ago. The bottom line for me as I listen and read words from that speech are that it is all about just. And what is justice? Seems to be it's in the eye of the beholder. There doesn't seem to be a consistent standard that runs through. The movie Just Mercy that's recently been released is a prime example of that. I will tell you that in the uh, time that I was incarcerated, a big discussion question that I had with other inmates was why did you plead guilty if you tell me you didn't do what you were convicted of and as my daughter said the answer was simple they didn't want to roll the dice with the judges the prosecutors and the jurors because that's what it is it's a crapshoot innocent until proven guilty is probably the most inaccurate cliche in American history. You walk through the door of that courthouse as a defendant, you're guilty, you're tagged. It doesn't take the prosecutors or the judges any, anything to, to add to that. You're considered guilty in this country. There is the presumption of guilt, not innocent. And if you're good enough, or if you have enough money you're slick enough, you can prove your innocence rather than have the government prove your guilt. So his dream of justice is still a dream. It's a work in progress. There's a lot more that needs to be done. My daughter mentioned the uh, lifetime tenure for federal judges. No accountability. But there's other things. How about immunity for prosecutors who can get up and say and do just about anything they want and you've got no recourse against them? How about the admission of circumstantial evidence? Well, what is circumstantial evidence? It's evidence that may or may not have happened. That though is treated as if it was direct evidence. How about giving immunity to individuals who have admitted to crimes in order to testify against someone else. <coughs> now they've admitted they're criminals, but yet they'll be given immunity to testify against someone who is supposed to be proved of their guilt. How much reality do you think really exists in that courtroom? I don't know why I ended up serving the time that I did. But I will tell you, I'm not one bit bitter about it. Because I'm a better person for what I know about the system today than for those 21 years that I was state legislator. If someone had told me 10 years ago, one-tenth of what I experienced, I would have said, you don't know what you're talking about. This is America. It doesn't happen like that here. Well, I can tell you, it's alive and well each and every day in this country. Now, Edmund Burke wrote back in the 1780s that all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men, and I will say good people, to do nothing. Martin Luther King, whether he knew it or not, heard that message. 
because that's exactly what he did. He picked up the mantle and he knew that in order to try to get justice throughout this society, he couldn't sit on the sidelines and do nothing. You know, one of the quotes that, that comes from Dr. King is there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular. But he must take it because his conscience tells him it's the right thing to do. If we want change in this country, no matter what the issue, but if we want change that starts to address the issue of justice, we can't just complain about it when it occurs, because it occurs every single day. So rather than complain, we need to take that bull by the horns, and we need to at least speak out. I commend the producers for that movie, Just Mercy. It's a small voice in the wilderness, though. What we need is to get a groundswell of people talking about mercy and justice, not just in this community, not just in this commonwealth, but in this nation as a whole. Because we declared July 4, 1776, that all men slash people are created equal. The system needs to live up to that dream from so many hundreds of years ago. Again, I feel blessed to be, be able to participate in, in this part of the ceremony today. God bless each and every one of you and keep the dream alive. Thank you. Right, uh, we always make it to the storm box. All right.